morning. Ooh, I need to change. You know what I need to do? Because it's Sunday daily savings. I have to trade an hour early because my state doesn't do daily savings. I need to change my brightness settings. Night shift. <laughs> it's like, why, why am I so... Why is my lighting so yellow? It's because my night shift is on. My whole screen is yellow. Is this a little close? Hey, Nathan, good morning. I think that's pretty good. All right, good morning. Lovely new layout. Thank you, Guardian. Nathan, welcome to the stream. Guardian, welcome to the stream. Market's coming down a little bit today. See how far. How far it can come down and how fast. All right. You guys can hear me all right. Level's all good. Focus on me again. How was everyone's weekend? I'm gonna wait for a few pe a few more people to trickle in before we do the um, before we spin the wheel. Give everyone a chance to be here when it happens. Because today we are starting the stock wheel challenge. Who's excited? We should actually get going during morning volatility, don't you think? And I should actually, hold on a second. I need to adjust something. Good morning, doctor. Looking forward to our uh, conversation later. I'm glad to hear that, Guardian. Mine was good. It was, um, got some good rest, some good uh, work done as well. That, um, that chat down there is a little small. I think I'm gonna have to adjust that with the layout. <clears throat> Thirty inches of snow outside, and I'm. <laughs> uh oh, that's not good. <clears throat> Weird. Um. There it is. Oh, I know what happened. Hold on, properties. Yeah, 30 is a lot of uh, inches. I'm waiting for thinkorswim to load still, guys. I'm sorry. Still waiting. Send a picture in Discord later. Perfect. Would love to see it. 
Love to see how miserable you are. Uh, unless you like the snow. Okay, how do I load a custom grid that I have saved? Can I not? Can, can I, I thought I could load workspaces in Thinkorswim. No? Can I not? All right, let me quickly create a new grid. Just give me a second here. Do, 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 do. Bop, 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 bop. Switch this to watch list, morning watch list, no nope. account positions, morning watch list, quick chart. Spy, link this red, link this red. Um, all the charts are gonna be messed up now. Oof, think or swim, you gotta work on that. If I customize my charts and I sign into a different account, I should be able to load charts from the other account. The accounts are linked. Pretty slow up last week as well, hasn't it? Um, yeah, right now the issue isn't slowness. Well, it's being a little slow right now, but that's my computer. It's because Thinkers, it's only slow for me because Thinkorswim isn't compatible with a new M1 chip by Macintosh. Macintosh, haven't said that word in a while. By Apple yet. Um, and the Mac that I'm trading on right now has the M1 chip much faster, lightning quick, amazing. But only issue, it's not compatible. So it, it, it's just a little slow. But right now I'm just trying to figure, I'm just trying to set up my charts because I'm signing into another account and the, the uh, charts aren't set up properly. No, like it, it, it doesn't carry over. So yeah, for some reason it doesn't carry over into uh, between accounts and I it can't like load in. I thought I saved the workspace. I did, I saved it as my workspace, but it only saved on the one account. It didn't like save to my computer or anything. So I need to change the style of all the charts. I need to adjust the scaling. I need to adjust everything. So give me a moment. Okay, and then we go to style, settings, missing the morning volatility on day one. It's all Thinkorswim's fault. Thinkorswim is pretty good for being free. Okay, keep time zoom, apply, okay, right click, style, settings, settings, time axis, keep time zoom, apply, okay, link this red, link this red, Set this to be level two, no chart. Set this to be time and sales, no chart. As well as active trader, right? But we want a vertical. Trade, yeah, trade, that works. Okay, I'm not sure if this is exactly, exactly, but this is pretty darn close to what I normally, let's see, how'd I do? I'd say I did pretty good, no, nope, never mind, it's not even updating. Update. Um,
my trading windows TOS thinkorswim you're on an old build of thinkorswim get on the new build get on the new build new build okay what's different oh this needs to be dragged down And what is what is black over my head? Is that just the um, this? Let's uh, bring this. Here. And then let's bring this. What is black over my head? Do you see that black square over my head? Oh, I know what it is. It's got to be the crop on this, right? Okay, there we go. How's that look? Pretty good. Pretty good if I do say so myself. morning riff not even gonna look at it because today is stock wheel challenge day good morning Nick sorry for all the tech issues we are we are ready to go okay good morning everyone welcome to the stream good morning good morning Today we are going to begin the stock wheel challenge, exclamation point challenge in chat if you're unfamiliar. I need to change the wording a little bit to say this week instead of next week, oh well. How this is going to work is we start the stream, as you can see, throughout the week there's not gonna be any more tech delays. I figured it out, I got the, uh, the charts all set up and ready to go. And so we are good to go on that front. Now, all we have left is to spin the wheel. So let me pull up the wheel. Let me pull up the wheel. And we're going to spin. All right, where do... Video capture, window capture, right? Okay. It appears to be that we are ready. Are you all ready? Are you all ready? Oh, that's not what I wanted. Not my webcam. Don't crop my webcam. Crop this. There we go. You all ready? Let's see what it lands on. What are you guys betting? Well, I'm not gonna actually have you bet channel points, but... What are you thinking? What are you hoping for? I haven't looked at the market yet today, so I I I, uh, I don't know. Bet it'll be space. Okay, Nathan thinks space. Costs. Okay. All right. I'm gonna spin it. Are you ready? The first wheel spin of the stock wheel challenge. Here we go.
Yes. <laughs> oh boy, I thought it was going to be Roblox. All right, we got NVIDIA. NVIDIA. Awesome. All right, let's do it. NVIDIA is the stock of the day. I can only trade NVIDIA today. Guardian says I'm lucky. I can only trade NVIDIA today. All right. Let me get rid of these um, customize options. No longer customizing. Okay, here's NVIDIA. We are up 1%. Let's analyze it a little bit. Daily chart. Daily chart, we're coming up to resistance at 520. The stock market is also SPY. It is, um, it's, it's green overall on the day. However, it's actually bouncing up right now. So it's not too, mm, I take that back. It's hesitating. It looks like it wants to come down Friday. It looked like it wanted to come down Thursday. It looked like it wanted to come down, but it hasn't come down. So we'll see. SPY is hesitating, but we're getting a little bit of uh, resistance here in NVIDIA at 520 whole number next resistance we have 540 as a major level let's check out the hourly chart looks like the past few days we've played around in these levels yep 520 might look for a breakout of that level we did get an opening breakout over 515 an obo pattern hmm And there's some there's some rejection of that 520 level. I like this on the break. Actually, the reversal under 520. The previous support level is 518. Two point stop down to 16. How many shares should I be trading with in this? I'm gonna trade 800 shares. I'm gonna watch how this goes. It broke under support 519, but it's choppy and light volume. So I wanna give it a chance to break under a support or resistance level. You can see it's held up right now. We're forming a five minute reversal pattern. Might wait until the five minute reversal pattern closes. We have two minutes until this five minute candle closes. If it closes with this deceleration in this doji, that'll be great. I do have an overall bearish bias on this only because it's testing major daily resistance uh the s p 500 is facing some resistance and looking to come down <clears throat> and i missed the the initial breakout but it is up only one percent so we might see tech stocks turn red on the day let me check this out Yeah, okay, so a decent mix in the market between red and green. Interesting. It's about 50-50. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna get ready to sell here under 518. There we go. Can I turn off auto, yeah, there's auto send. All right, auto send. Selling at market under 518. Whoops. Let me lower share size. Um, why aren't you letting me trade? Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Let's see, it's still hovering around this 518 level, didn't let me enter initially, so I, I get a second chance to watch the level two here. Very light volume, and I'm not liking how slow Thinkorswim is being today. It is a Monday, it is usually slow on a Monday, and actually, it's not being slow. What's happening is I didn't change in this account, 
the the time that it shows me data. What what tab is it under? System delay real time no delay apply settings. There we go. Okay, now I can sell market on this breakdown of 518. All right, I'm in the trade. Got in for 350 shares of Nvidia. I got in a little bit early because it's forming this inverted hammer candle. It might come around and bite me in the ass, but it did technically break 518 my entry. So I'll let myself get stopped out if I need to. Um, wait, did it? It didn't buy, did it? What did I do with my position? Oh, it's not even going to let me see, really? This may be an issue if this doesn't let me trade. Yeah, okay, I was able to short and I hit my stop loss, so I'm going to get out there. Starting off the challenge with a loss, wonderful, wonderful. Small loss though, 500 bucks. I'm trading with $100,000 here in buying power for this challenge. Figure that's a good level um, with some of the bigger stocks. You guys put Tesla, you guys put Nvidia on, um, but this is too choppy right now. So I'm cool with that. That's why I took limited share size. That's why I kept a tight stop and stuck with the stop. Only lost 500 on a $100,000 uh, account and it's actually breaking 520 in which case I would rather go long so we're playing off of this resistance level it either breaks or it rejects and in this case it broke and so now we're flipping the script stop loss is 518 targets gonna be 522 and I'm gonna check on the one hour chart for a slightly better target see how high it was able to break up before 22 Or something 30 I don't think it has I mean we're betting against the market here I don't think it has enough to go that far so I'm gonna look for a 1R trade in this one let me draw in my trade on the screen so entry is going to be 520 stop 518 first target 522 and then I will I will sell 300 I bought 350 shares I'll sell 300 shares at 522 and then hold the remaining 50 shares to run <clears throat> this is coming very close though so you can see how I was trading with that big resistance level it either rejected it which it did and it broke through support levels but it kind of faked us all out here so you can see 518 was a support level broke through faked me out on the entry and then came up and stopped out which is okay but that also is a bullish sign so i'm able to go long on this as well we'll see if it holds up long enough to get profits because it could just be very choppy again I, I, as i mentioned i'm overall bearish sentiment today the market's headed down but this broke a major daily level i mean we could look at last what was it there uh, it's one minute chart. it's not gonna let me go back we could look at last thursday i believe it was when was this yeah on thursday you could see these wicks poked through 520 multiple times we could get that right now on this hourly candle we could get just a wick poking through but even the wick poking through came up to 521.71 this one came up to 60. i guess it's close level two is hovering at that one point mark so we'll see what this does the market's still coming down, as you can see above my head here. The market's looking like it actually wants to break down.
but I'm hoping to scalp a quick profit in NVIDIA before the market comes down. See, that's an issue with, not an issue, but that's part of the challenge of this one stock challenge is I can, I only have the option to buy or sell. I don't have the option to look at a different stock, right? So I'm going to trade off of the levels that the stock gives me like 520 is a very major level that I'm lucky that this is playing around with today, but it makes it very difficult because you would normally want to go long over a break of a massive resistance level, right? But the overall market's coming down. So, and, and we know that tech pretty much rules the S and P 500 in the current market condition. Um, so it makes it very tricky. It's a good challenge. Even though Nvidia is one of the the, uh, the easy to trade stocks, so to speak, because the volume is ticking up. It's still a challenge nonetheless, even on all of the easy to trade stocks. Being limited by just buy and sell on a single stock, is it, it, it is extremely limiting. That's one of the lessons I want you all to pull out of this challenge and, and why you need to not get your eyes stuck on a single stock. If you miss out on a trade on the stock, or if you lose on a, like that first trade I lost on, if I lose again on the bullish trade, like at that point for normal trading, I'd just be done trading the stock because I clearly, it clearly doesn't have a, a, a cl I'm saying clear a bit too many times, but you, know, you get what I mean, right? It, it's not clearly picking a direction. If you lose on the downside, when it triggered, like it actually triggered, it actually confirmed a reversal, or when it confirmed a breakout, if it doesn't uh, hit target, it doesn't know what direction it wants to go. And that that's a situation when you're actually trading that's really easy to get caught into. It's a trap where you, you lose money on a stock, so you want to make money back on that stock. And we call that revenge trading. But a lot of times that stock is just not good to trade on that day, be it volume or SR levels that it's playing with, what have you. What is Roblox doing? I'm going to check on another screen. RBLX. It is decently volatile, but no, I'm, I'm okay with trading NVIDIA here because Roblox I can't short, remember? Okay, I'm going to get out here 300 shares. Got those closed at 522.10 was my fill. Perfect. So pretty much made on this trade, made back the profit from the first trade because they were both 1R trades. Um, my fills were a bit worse on the short trade. So I got filled. Um, I ended up losing a bit of money, on, uh, a bit more than I'm making on this one by like 50 bucks just because of the fill, but I can let this run now. So here's active management. I bought 350 shares. I just sold 300 shares made back with those 300 shares, most of the losses from the first trade. And now the remaining 500, uh, 500, the remaining 50 shares, I'm gonna going to let run or pull back to break even. I'm not gonna let these shares turn into a loss. They're either gonna run or pull back to break even. But you can see over my head, SPY is breaking down actually. So that is kind of preventing Nvidia from breaking out fully, which is exactly what we expected with SPY coming down. And I do expect SPY to come down for the rest of the morning. It's coming down and testing. Let me show you SPY actually, this is valuable for you all because SPY, I'm not trading it, but I'm gonna look at it because we can see um, how stocks respond to the overall market. Okay, where what is this level at? If it's drawn on my other account. One hour chart. 393.30. Okay, let me show you this. Level and spy. And this goes back like days and days and days. But there's this level at 393.30. Yeah, like if, here, let me draw it all the way back. See how many times it's tested this. Edit properties, 393. I think I'm actually at 29 to be exact. 
So we're coming down right now. So you can see here, it was uh, tested as resistance, support, resistance, 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 resistance. Came all the way down. Remember, everybody was panicking. Market came down a couple percent. Came up, tested as resistance. Resistance in pre-market came down, continued coming down. People are panicking, panicking, comes all the way back up. Breaks through support, breaks under resistance. And then we're gapping over it. Well, we broke through it on Friday as a bit bullish, breaking through it on Friday. And now we're testing it right now as support tested it in pre-market a few minutes before the market opened or came close to within a few cents. Now we're testing it right now as well. But All right, NVIDIA is almost back down to break even. Although the SPY is bouncing, so this might be beneficial to us. Yes, NVIDIA bounced off of break even, didn't stop me out at break even, because remember I moved my stop back up to that break even point. So if we look, PL day minus 86. PL open 1750 on these remaining 50 shares. And again, I'm trading with $100,000 today. And I, I think I'm gonna do the $100,000 every day for this challenge. So we can see at the end of the challenge how much the account has grown, but it's enough buying power, I figured, for, um, again, like I said, Nvidia, Tesla, these more expensive stocks to be able to buy a couple hundred shares at least and be able to uh, take partials and whatnot. Um, but not too much, it's not like millions of dollars that's just ridiculous and, and not practical. Um, Riff, I know you asked about American Airlines. I'm going to respond to you, but I'm going to look at it not up here on the stream. I'm going to look at it on uh, my phone. So Airlines, yeah, American is up 10%. It's doing amazing from when we all invested in it um, back at 15. <laughs> up almost, what is it, 70% now or something from then? A um, little over. Anyways, it is doing really well because Airlines... Ha reported that they are they have increased their flights and their flight capacity with all the uh, vaccine news coming out. Nvidia is breaking out. Spy is bouncing nicely. Yeah, look at that. Look at that bounce in Spy. Right off of that support level that I drew in. Right off of that support level. Looks great. And that's why you always want to pay attention to what the overall market is doing. As soon as it bounced off of, you might not have known, like you could have panicked on this red candle down or have known that there's still a support level in the market. It's coming down, no need to panic. Could be supported by that level. That is the point of a support level. looking for signs of weakness here big spread in this stock which is a little unfortunate but volume is really low today in this one looking for looking to get over 524 if we can
Nathan, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the footage and see how entertaining it is for the challenge. Um, I might like take clips of when I enter and exit the trades and then compile all of that together on YouTube. Um, I might change the scrolling text at the bottom to say like today's stock. I might do that now actually. If I do something like this. And then I might also, like I'm gonna look at the footage, edit it down, see how entertaining, see how educational it is. And then figure out like putting it on Instagram, putting it on TikTok, maybe putting it on YouTube. Okay, we broke 524. We're now positive on the day by $50. Now I want to see how far this break can go. Spy did end up coming, like reversing back down a little bit. It's pullback wasn't uh, fully confirmed, I should say. It wasn't strong enough to continue that pullback. It might also be setting a higher low here. All things to be aware of. Um, watching both very closely looks like spy is success i mean it's for me hammer candle now it looks like it might like the bounce might have been good just having a few sell orders come in italy prosecutor sees batch of astrazeneca covid19 vaccine shots after man died following jab oh boy italy has been going through the ringer this pandemic i say this pandemic like we go through a pandemic every few years <laughs> Uh, all right, 524 failed here as the market continues down a bit. And that's my sign to sell. Okay. We are out. Don't like the two red candles in a row. Let this run to test 524 and continue going, but it came under 524, broke a previous candle low. It could keep going up as much as we want. What I care about is we're back up to break even on the PL. Like exactly break even as if nothing happened today. Two trades, one win, one loss. The win covered the loss. They were both one R trades. That's inherent of taking one R trades. We had one times risk here, um, which was two points so our our capital r our risk value was two points reward was two points took profits at the one r level of profit at the first target at 522 which was also near resistance from last week and then let the remaining 50 shares run to see how high they could go tested 524 got out there and got two r on those 50 shares so we are now break even and what I'm waiting for now is not for this to keep running without me and get all worried and and freak out. No, what I am waiting for now is another setup to trade a whole other setup. I am going to, well, I'm gonna keep the previous trade lines in there. For, no, I'm gonna get rid of them. We saw them, we saw the trade. I wanna have a, a fresh state of mind to get into another setup. So we're watching this one. My times are all off because it's an hour delayed and like I'm an hour earlier right now. So let's see, 8.30 was when I was changing to two minutes. So now I should do it at 7.30, okay. Let's add a time frame here. Intraday one day, two minute. Aggregation period, no, not 20, two. Five days, two minutes, add, move it up, apply.
by. Okay. Good morning, Pure Grimer, or afternoon to you. Okay, so there's a one minute chart looking kind of choppy, doesn't know what it wants to do. So I'm gonna zoom out to the two minutes, see what's going on. You can see two minute broke 522 and up and down just sideways at this 524 level. So I'm, I'm mainly going to look for a reversal. We're saying Nokia is going to 560 since the breakout. Just my observation. Let me check on another screen. We're only trading Nvidia today here in stream because it is a uh, stock wheel challenge going on right now. I can only trade one stock, um, so I need to stay focused on the stock. But I'll check it for you on another uh, screen. Am I right in saying Nokia is going to break 560? going to 560 because of a breakout. Well, no, there's no, even if a stock breaks out, it's not guaranteed to go to the next resistance level. And the previous high was 534 and the high today is 539. Barely, barely, barely broke it, but it actually rejected that and is coming back down. So there's resistance at this five, let's call it 540 that it tested today and it's tested twice, this 540 resistance level that it's rejecting right now. So no, that's not a guarantee. After rejecting a resistance level, it's not a guarantee that it's gonna go to 560. Probability, no, it's, it's not probable unless this closes over that 540 resistance level, but it only hit 539. So it's touching resistance, but it hasn't closed it yet. So we can see here on Nvidia, it broke through that 522 resistance level that we were talking about before my previous target, however, it is still higher than the previous low right here at 520. So until it breaks under that, I'm not fully bearish on this, but I do see that SPY is coming down. So remember my overall sentiment in this stock today was bearish. We were able to scalp a quick breakout of that 520 resistance level, but we might be able to scalp or take a longer term trade on a bigger break of this 520 level and try taking the breakdown of this level again. Watching on the five minute and the two minute. It's not a perfect pattern, but this is more uh, trend change play. So the previous low is here at 520. 520 we know is this big SR level. It's a, if it sets a higher low still, which it is right now and continues up, then it's continuing the uptrend. But if it ends up setting a lower low by breaking under 520, I would wanna see a lower high and then a lower low again to confirm the downtrend. Not just one lower low, because that could just be a wick pokes through failed breakdown failed reversal, but I want to see it confirm. I want to see a lower low, lower high, lower low again to confirm that downtrend. So we're going to sit here and watch because SPY is still setting a higher low as well. It is making red candles, but that doesn't mean that it is necessarily breaking down into the world it's still over that 393 30 level the ceo good morning welcome to the stream today's stock of the day as you can see right here is nvidia we we uh spun the wheel it landed on nvidia one of the green stocks one of the uh, or blue stocks one of the good ones one of the easy to trade ones today it's having slightly lower volume than usual but it makes nice, decent 1% up and down moves throughout the day, and it's doing the same thing today. Um, however, it was trading against the trend of the market for a little while, which made it a little bit confusing to trade. But now um, we took one trade that was a loss at the breakdown of 518. You can see this was when the market was coming down. If you look over my head, the market was breaking down, and this was... Um, 
breaking down under a previous resistance level. Now support level broke under, got in at 518. Target was around 515, 516, stop at 520, uh, two point stop, came up right after I entered, stopped out. I stopped out, stuck to my rules, and then actually entered at the break of 520 because that was the major daily resistance level that we were trading off of. So I only took this short because it rejected that level and then broke under and made, uh, broke under the previous SR level confirming slightly the rejection of that 520 resistance uh, slash support. But instead it broke over, so I went long. Entry 520, stop 518, target 522, hit target, got rid of 300 of my 350 shares, held on to 50, came down, almost hit break even by a penny, and then came up and I sold the remaining 50 shares at 524, ended up completely recovering the initial loss. So we're about break even on the day, and here I'm actually going to get in 350 shares again at the break of 520 yet again, because I, I like the hesitation on these two candles and then the breakdown, the anticipation, we could see it consolidated and then broke. It didn't just plow through dead cat bounce. It didn't just, um, come down and bounce off of the support level and curl back up. I know I was saying I'm looking for a, a, a lower low, lower high, lower low, and I still am. I could trade options in this as well, but I don't really want to because it's a Friday expiration today, expiration in a week. Actually, there's no um, expiration today. Today's not a Friday. I don't know why I was thinking that. I was thinking expiration is today in SPY because they have in SPY there are Monday expirations. That's what I was thinking. Okay. So we could trade options in this, get a little bit more out of it. About, about 8K in buying power left, which would be one contract at this price point. <laughs> um but I'm happy to trade the stock. I made a sell up on momentum, Basio. Not good, I'm calling my trade, what, what was not good? I don't know what you mean, I made a sell up on momentum, on up momentum. It wasn't up momentum, it, uh, the whole market is coming down. And when the S&P is coming down, it brings tech down because they're very closely tied and it rejected a major resistance level, which is not, not an upward momentum thing. To reject a resistance level and then break a previous SR level. Today is bearish sentiment in this stock and the market. So it was not up momentum but it was a slightly risky trade. That's why I kept a really tight stop. And I was, uh, I had the plan of taking it both sides of getting in uh, short and long around the 520 um, because the, the 520 level on the daily chart is a very strong SR level. You can see how many times it's bounced off of this 520 level. Numerous, numerous, numerous times on the daily chart. It even rejected it last week, very strong level. So that's why I was trading off of that. So when it rejected that level, that was not a bullish thing at all. Rejecting a resistance level, then breaking down a support level is actually bearish, but you get these wicks sometimes that do fake you out, break through and then continue up. And that's why you have tight stops. It's all about having small losses and big wins. Hey Drips, welcome to the stream. Good morning to you. Not much, just trading the stock wheel challenge. The first stock of the challenge is NVIDIA. Trading this breakdown of 520 here. Okay, see you in crazy today for you. Crazy in a good way or crazy in a bad way? Good, very good. Well, I'm really happy to hear that then. Up 50%, damn. Don't forget to take some profits. Nice job, congrats on that.
All right, my stop on this trade is even tighter. It's about a point, $1.15 up to this previous high. So you can see lower low, lower highs on this breakdown of 520. Let me uh, draw in these levels for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Stop, entry. Look at the reward to risk on this trade. So first target is gonna be that 518 support level that it rejected as resistance and support. And then again, letting the remaining shares run and depending on how if it comes down quickly and breaks through that 518 quickly i might hold all of the shares through the break because it's looking like it might do that spy is breaking down we we're 145 dollars in profit on this trade Drips, what's your target? Do you plan on taking profits today or is it like a, a five year plus hold that you're doing? What's your exit strategy? How do you plan on getting out of this? <clears throat> Nvidia, very wide spreads, slow order fills in general. I do have live data on, but it, it looks like it's not live because this is just, it's trading very choppy. It's trading very choppy. All right, Drips, well, you should have a plan before the moment happens so you don't panic and get out at the wrong time or hold on through a big loss. Or we might have another stop out here. We'll see. Oops. The market is coming down. It's just unfortunate that Nvidia has so much stop. This should have been a uh, one of the orange stocks, one of the the bad ones, the difficult to trade ones. With how choppy this is being, you mind checking it out? I'll check it out on another screen. Sure. LKCO up 42 percent uh, went up to two dollars pre-market should have gotten out then <laughs> you should have gotten out then okay this um, it, it looks like a typical not that this was a pump and dump but that pump and dump style chart where it spikes up an insane amount comes down and then within a couple weeks it has another mini spike but it doesn't hold if you look at GameStop it's kind of similar to the GameStop chart actually but I don't know what GameStop is doing today yeah it's like the GameStop chart except for GameStop with all the news coming out and the Redditors rallying behind it it ended up continuing but if you look at GameStop's secondary spike when it went up to 180 and then came back down. Most stocks would come back down all the way after that. Um, so you think good sell right now? Well, I mean, you'll never get hurt taking profits at 50% uh, ROI. $1.50 seems to be a decent level, but it did just bounce off of, like it is reversing right now. So $1.60 on the hourly chart is SR. And a dollar eighty. 160, 180, 2, 220. It seems like the 20 cent levels are SR in the stock. And then the next support level is actually down at 130 uh, and 140, actually. So it bounced off of that 140 support level right now. It's coming up and testing that 160 resistance. So you can watch it. Um, What you could do, honestly, is sell half of your shares, and then that pretty much covers like any loss you could have, even if this goes all the way down to zero because you're up so much. 
sell half of your shares and then hold the other half until this makes a pretty big move. That way you at least, like you'll feel good about securing profits, right? Because you're up 50% on the trade use. So you'll feel good securing some sort of profit. And then if it does continue up to $2 or $3 per share, you'll still make a really good profit. There's no what if I held all my shares to $3 per share, could have made multiple hundred of percent on all of it. In the long run, that doesn't really work out getting greedy like that. Um, in the long run, again, you want small losses and big wins, but the way you get big wins isn't by holding every single trade until it's a big win. It's by managing your trades into big wins. It's by taking your, your some of your shares off the table in profit so that you have that profit so that at least it was a winning trade that completely that makes the losses small. Here's how it eliminates any potential loss for that stock. If you get stopped out, the loss is still zero because the, the small win in profit that you took negates it. And that's how you keep your losses small. And then you let the remaining shares run to let the win be even bigger. So in the case where you take profits at your target at 50%, let's say 50 or 75% of your shares off the table, let's just say 50. I don't know how many shares you're, you're trading. Um, you take your share, some shares off the table. That's that profit covers the loss at your stop loss. So now if you get stopped out, your stop loss is zero. So you minimize your loss, small losses, right? The idea is small losses, big wins. So that makes your loss very small, zero. Or it continues up, in which case you got your profits, but then you also comp you also double, if not more, those profits by letting the rem remaining shares run. And that creates a big win. I'm gonna take 300 shares off the table here in I'm gonna let this break down on, like I said, if it forms a really big candle breaking down under this 318 level, then I'd like to let it continue going. Level two is showing a little bit of a sign of a pullback, but it's it's uh, it's being a little slow. Should be real time data. I think it's just the, the fills, there's not many shares going through. Yeah, it is real time. So there's just not that many shares. You can see one, one, a bunch of ones. <laughs> It, and, and so not many orders are actually going through. So because it broke through with so much strength, high volume, markets breaking down that massive SR level that I told you about, that I showed you guys at 393.30-ish um, on SPY. Um, I use SPY instead of SPX just because it's easier to say a shorter number. And because there's pre-market data instead of having to flip between SPX and and futures to see pre-market data. Does that make sense, Drip? There's a little lesson to all of you on managing your trades and how to maximize your wins. All right, finding some support here at 518, which I like. I do like that it's finding support here because that means that it could break down even further. But now that it has tested that 1R level, it has tested that first target, I didn't get out yet because I wanna give this a chance since it came down with so much strength to actually break through that support level because I think it can. Um, I move then my stop loss to break even, so now if it shows signs of coming up, my stop loss is essentially break even. So there's zero risk here because I was right that it was going to hit 518, right? I went short as right that it's going to hit 518 before stopping out. But you can see how it tested where these two wicks were. This is the previous, so we had high, this is the high before that, so it was the SR level 522, that was our previous target, remember? Um, so I don't wanna end up losing money even though I was right, but I wanna give this a chance to break down. SPY, you could see, is testing that support level, and so we expect it to bounce a little bit.
And that's just part of trading a stock that follows the, the market so closely, but also not because it's, it's, it's choppy, it's light volume. It's making decent swings, but there, it's, it's only trading 100 shares at a time on the bid and the ask. You can see seven shares, three shares, two shares, one, 40, 60, because it's a really expensive stock, but the people who are trading it aren't like in Tesla who are willing to buy 100 shares of Tesla at $704. Like this is trading 10 times as many shares. Guardian, I'm really happy to hear that. Guardian says, I'm hopping in and out today since I got home uh, since I got some work to take care of as well, but very educational only trading one stock. I'm happy to hear it's very educational trading one stock. That's the goal of this week's challenge because it's showing you how managing just one stock is. It is unfortunate though getting stopped out break even here. I'm gonna see how this candle does though because a bunch of sell orders just came through on the time and sales that can bring this down. It didn't break through. But it, this is, so I might need, actually just need to reevaluate this in the moment. The tight stops that I'm using in this are good because it, it's protecting me from losses. However, it's also bad because it's not letting this have enough swings in the current chart. Like you can see the market is still looking like it wants to come down. This probably still wants to come down. I bet this comes down by the end of the day, but it's technically by my trading rules. I mean, there you go. By my trading rules, can I change this to limit, please? Can I can I set a limit order? No, where's limit? Oh, thank you, Swift. Such a, um, yeah, parent order limit but you're not letting me. Um, you see it just spiked up on one order. On one order, it just spikes up because it's so, uh, so choppy. Like it's making me break my rules, getting out of break even here. Don't wanna take a big loss right now because it spiked up on one order, even though it's very bearish. It, it's it's uh, trending down now, lower highs, lower lows. But I need to set a good example and stick to rules, although I couldn't get out at my break even. We'll see if it hits a stop loss. Let me show you SPY really quick. See, SPY spiked up barely, but it's, I mean, very harshly downtrending down onto the support level. Such strong support that I'm hoping that it breaks down. That's what I'm trading in NVIDIA is this breakdown here. The breakdown of SPY, I'm using NVIDIA to do it because tech has been following the uh, overall market quite closely. But I want to set a limit order in this because the spreads are so big, I couldn't get out without getting a ridiculous spread. But here's the stop out, so I'm just going to order and get out. Nope, wrong side. Watching the level two. All right, there's the exit. 522.06, even though that wasn't what was on the, the spread, fine. <clears throat> so there's a, a decent loss. There's a, a bigger loss than 2R technically, or than uh, two points technically, because the entry got in, it filled. Because of the massive spread here, it got filled like 30 cents too far down because this was pretty volatile on the way down. I'm willing to take this trade again. I'm gonna use options the second time around. Make back some of these losses again. But as you can see, market's trending down. This is able to pull back up. Do you trade any options? Yeah, comrade, I trade options all the time. But right now I'm doing the one stock challenge. Today's stock is Nvidia. The stock wheel challenge, I can only trade one stock a day. So it's very limiting. So I'm taking the opportunities that this is giving me but I'm, I'm trying to pretty much minimize my losses at this point because it is trading very, very choppy, 30 cent spreads, only 100 shares at a time, but there's orders coming through of five shares, five shares, and so the spread isn't moving at all. The price is jumping around all over the place, stopping me out. 
that's the nature of trading. Uh, only one stock is, I can't sit here and say, you know what, this stock is just not good to trade today. I'm, I'm going to stop trying and go move on to another stock. So I'm going to keep trying, but I'm going to keep showing you how to manage these different unique positions that you might find yourself getting stuck in. And so in that one, like I wanted to get break, I wanted to sell at break even because it hit my target. That's my rule, my trading rule. I couldn't because it spiked up as soon as it broke break even, it spiked all the way up to 521. So I just w gave it a chance to hit my stop out. Unfortunate, but that's part of trading. You need to have all these rules in place that help you minimize your losses. So I ended up taking a one hour loss instead of getting my one hour win. It did hit my target. It was a winning trade, but it came through on just one share and then bounced back up and it didn't have a chance to get out at my target. Had to get out and shovel. How's the NVIDIA trading going so far? Dr. Stump, no worries. Hope the snow's going all right. Uh, two losses and one win. Technically, a loss, a win, and then another win that didn't fill and turned into a loss. <clears throat> so it, it, it's been a little tricky. NVIDIA's not been the best stock to trade today. If I were able to trade any stock today, I would stay away from NVIDIA after seeing this but I'm showing you all not how to trade a stock that's bad to trade. I mean, NVIDIA is on your list of good stocks to trade. So this is being a little bit ironic. Um, it's showing you how to mostly, I think the lessons to pull out of my trading today is how to actively manage these stocks, these trades that might not be going in your favor, that might not be behaving well. I need to get rid of this watch list, by the way. Um, one stock and one stock only, NVIDIA. Um, showing you how to manage these, these pretty difficult trading situations. But good quest question, comrade. Feel free to ask any questions. Here's a, a command for you if you're interested in learning options. Options 101, there's a video on my YouTube channel um, about how to, if you're used to trading stocks but you're interested in options, how to trade options at, while trading the stock chart. How to use options to trade stocks to um, if you have a small account or what have you. If you don't wanna be limited by short sales and you'd rather be able to purchase puts instead. Okay, so I'm glad I did stick to my hard stop here. Um, remember I had a light stop here at 521.25 from this previous high, but then I realized after I put that line that it actually set this close of this green candle after I entered. And so that wasn't even a level when I did enter. It kind of was up here, but not really. The The previous SR level was at 522, so I corrected that. All right, so we're testing this resistance level at 524 again. That was my previous target. I'm still bearish on this overall, but I'm not gonna be oblivious to its price action if it gives another opportunity. I'm trading three options in GNS and IVR. Nice job, comrade. Well, I hope you make some profits on those. <clears throat> All right, let's see how this does on the, I'm watching the five minute chart a little closer now. We're coming up to launch session soon in 11 minutes. I need to rewire my brain and all of its calculations from my time zone to um, to Eastern time because of daylight savings and, and we don't have daylight savings here. So you guys all on the East Coast switched time on me. So the market opens at a different time during my day. I have to rework my work schedule to uh, to trade. Yes, I am, comrade. Yes, I am. Beautiful weather, beautiful blue skies, lots of cactuses, cacti, beautiful hiking. But when this single day comes around, it was great when, when we got out of daylight savings last fall because I got an extra hour in the morning to my morning routine to be able to uh, do more, more for me, write and journal and meditate and, and 
and shower and drink coffee, breakfast, work out, all that. But now that time, my morning routine has been cut down by one hour. I say all that, but I, I, uh, I lost my morning routine pretty quick after moving here. Needed to catch up on sleep and ended up uh, shifting my sleep schedule to be a bit later. Ah, oh, nice comrade. The best trade of the day in NVIDIA with the most conviction was this breakout of 514. However, the stock was only up like half a percent at that point, so it wasn't that great. I'm not gonna get in on this breakout of 524 here because of all of these green candles in a row. I'm actually looking for a five minute reversal at 524, so we're looking for deceleration. That's smaller and smaller candle bodies, smaller and smaller volume, as well as some sort of reversal candle, like a doji that's forming right now, but we still have three minutes on this candle, on this five minute candle before it closes. Yeah, exactly, comrade. How's Seattle been for you? Yeah, I um, I was trying to move to the West Coast. I was trying to move to California, to San Diego, but um, this was obviously during COVID. This was recent, like six months ago. Um, there's nothing available. This is when there are all the fires in Northern California, so everybody was moving south. <laughs> or, um, yeah, so it was very difficult to find a place to rent in San Diego at the time. So we ended up settling with Arizona, but trading West Coast time is, is miserable. I'm a morning person. I've been bad at getting out of bed, to be completely honest. But once I am up and out of bed and awake and all of that, then I'm like fully awake and ready to go, ready to attack the day. I mean, I, I teach for three hours every single morning at 6 a.m., so... <clears throat> Definitely a morning person. I love the morning's favorite time of the day. However, trading at 6.30 a.m. Mm. I don't like starting work that early. I like surfing that early. Like surfing during the sunrise. I don't like uh, trading that early. Although my routine in the times that I've visited San Diego and, and stayed in California, my routine was to get up, yoga, meditate, journal, eat breakfast, drink, oh no, drink coffee, trade, for like an hour and a half until the lunch session. The lunch session is at 8 a.m. I would eat breakfast and then at 8.30, put on my wetsuit, go out to the water and surf until like 11 and then come in, have lunch, take a nap and then do the rest of my work for the day. <laughs> Doc, yeah, absolutely. I love visiting family on the East Coast because of that. Instead of having to constantly calculate when is 9.30, when is 11 for uh, lunchtime, when is, yeah. So SPY is bouncing off of, it's forming a double bottom off of this support, this SR level at 393, 30 area and bouncing off setting a higher high however video is meeting some resistance at 524 so a little bit of conflicting information which might explain some of the chops some of the false convictions some of the reason why i'm able to scalp these one r trades but not able to the one r trades aren't aren't moving any further than one r and i need to recognize that after this last stop out that it hit one r i need to be happy with one r i think in this stock because it's trading against the market. It's not having a ton of conviction on these moves. Normally, NVIDIA is great for taking big swings that it hits a level of, of uh, a reversal point. It hits a level of resistance, reverses down back to the open, back to the previous close, et cetera. It, it makes that big 1% move multiple times throughout the day. So I was trying to trade it like that, but today specifically, and I'm, I only know this because I'm only able to trade this stock. So it's actually a good thing to only be able to trade this stock. I'm able to learn this new behavior of NVIDIA now um, that when it does trade against the market, it gets very choppy and makes these one R trades consistently. This one, this one. Um, and I need to be happy with that one R. Nano, welcome to the stream. Good morning to you. I'm doing great. 
So far, the uh, stock wheel challenge has proven to be a challenge, which is good. Um, we've had a, a, some great educational points throughout that a few people in chat here are saying that they want to go back and re-watch and get the education out of it. I'm also going to be um, probably try and clip. So I'm going to see how well it does clipping this down to a YouTube size video. First month of trading stock, still learning, but picking it up fast. Nice, comrade. Um, read this blog post, though. <laughs> I wrote this for you. There, there are some some cycles that the beginner trader goes through in their first couple of months. Just be aware of it. I'm not saying you're in these cycles, but don't believe that you're better than everybody else. Just be aware of them. Avoid them. Be conscious of this and be proactive to not get stuck in these cycles. You can be better than everybody else, but you're not inherently better. I mean, you've heard it. 90% of beginner traders fail. Of the 10% that, that don't fail, 90% of those end up break even and only 10% of them profit. So only 1% of the, the whole lot ends up actually profiting. So if you want to be that top 1%, you need to be aware of this beginner cycle to, to prevent you and help you from not falling under those other categories. Video is now finding some support at this 522 level. If it sets a higher low at 522 and breaks 524 again, then I can consider going long. The market is setting a higher high. I'd like to see Nvidia set a higher high and that way they can trade together. That way Nvidia can trade with a little bit more conviction. Drips, how are you doing in that trade? How's it treating you? Looks like it's pulled back a little bit. Yeah, it's just looking choppy today, consolidating. I mean, it looks no fun to be in, to try and manage right now. Nvidia is tough when it's ranging on the four hour. Good to know, Nana. So let me show everybody the four hour. I also want to make this smaller here. It's not quite ranging on the four hour. You can see it's trending on the four hour downtrend. And we're now coming up into an uptrend with the break of 520. Um, but over the past, since last Wednesday, it's been going between 500 and 520. Back down to 500, up to 520. Now, it finally broke out of that range so that it should be a very bullish thing. However, it's been a little choppy today nonetheless. So I am going to switch when a stock is more choppy. I like switching to a bigger time frame. So I'm going to switch to the 5 and the 15 here. Remove some of this chop. Actually got a gap on this 5-minute candle. That's interesting. Fifteen looks like it, 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 it. It's all forming a situation where it might set a higher low here at five twenty two and then break out of five twenty four, which I'm okay with. I'm gonna scout out some options really quick. Five twenty two fifty. If it breaks five forty four, I'll get into five twenty five. And yes, this is on a uh, paper money account. I explained this at the beginning to those of you who are just joining because I don't have $100,000 in buying power to throw into a challenge like this and risk my money in a not very smart way of trading. Um, as much as I'd love to be TikTok famous and say, yeah, I risked a million dollars on these dumb trades and they ended up actually working out. That's not my style of trading. I'm not willing to risk my money in a trading challenge that isn't... Uh, a smart challenge to, for actual trading. If the challenge is a genuine, like a small account challenge, how much can you grow $500 in capital? That's okay because I get to trade it like normal. But if it's a one of these challenges that limits my trading, I don't want to risk my actual capital in it. Um, Nano, which stock is up for tomorrow? I don't know. We have to spin the wheel tomorrow at the market open. And then we'll find out. But I, I, I don't know. I can't prepare. That defeats the point. 
All right, Nvidia coming down now under 522 again. As SPY rejects a whole number. At 394, pardon my yawning, didn't sleep well last night. I ordered some of uh, some of the Rocks energy drink just out of curiosity and because I was planning on uh, switching to energy drinks, healthy energy drinks, not like Red Bull or anything crazy with a bunch of chemicals in it or what have you. Nothing against them. Every once in a while, totally fine. Everything in moderation. Um, but switching over to energy drinks. I don't want to switch to coffee right now because it, it's not been doing my stomach and my acid reflux well. I've been drinking cacao juice. Not juice. I mean, it's cacao coffee, but it's not coffee bean. It's cacao. Um, just doesn't have enough caffeine on days that I don't sleep well. Yeah, but that's not exactly what I'm going for. I'm looking for like a like a pre-workout hit of energy. Um, as well as like a, a coffee replacement. And so best of both worlds. I also just want to try it. I mean, he's been doing a lot of work on uh, marketing for this. It's his new company. And so I'd like to support the guy. See uh, what all the fuss is about and test it out. All right, some bearish signs coming in. I'm not gonna get into a trade. I don't wanna rush into a trade if it's uh, just choppy like this. I'm not gonna take every single break of every single SR level. I only took, I took three trades. One trade too many, obviously, because <laughs> we're negative on the day. Um, teasing. Trade should have worked out, just didn't get filled. Amino energy brand, amino acids, blends is one of my favorite. Can drink it pre -work. yeah. So, Doctor, it's very similar. The, what's the brand called? Zoa, Z-O-A. Um, very similar. It has amino acids in it. It also has your daily dose of vitamin C, which I need. Because um, I haven't been taking vitamin C supplements and I can't eat fruit. Fructose intolerant. Um, it also has B6 and B12 added to it with natural ingredients. And so it's, it's, um, <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, will supplement a lot of vitamins as well that I'm not getting in my diet with not eating fruit. So I won't have to take as many multivitamins. Comrade, you think putting money in an ETF is a waste at a young age? Absolutely not. Long-term investments, comrade, is about time in the market rather than timing the market. It's not about when's the best time to get in. It's about how much time you are in. You wanna be in as long as possible. So the younger you can start putting money into an ETF, the longer you give that money to compound because the market makes on average seven to 10% a year. So if you put it in an ETF that roughly follows the market and you get that seven to 10% a year, let's just average to 10%, why not? It's easier to do math. You get 10% a year, that 10% next year compounds and it ends up being 11% of your initial holding because it's 10% of that 10% as well. So it's an initial 1% and that adds up pretty fast. And if you're adding money into that, comrade, what I would recommend is dollar cost averaging. Quick lesson on DCA, dollar cost averaging is to add the same, very important, the same amount of money at the same increment of time. That way it's the average price of the market that you get in at instead of if you put in a bunch of money on this day that the market is down a lot or a bunch of money on, and then a bunch of money on this day that the market is up a lot and then a bunch of money on this day that the market is up a lot and it comes down like, that's not the average you need to put in the same amount in equal increments in time. So if you're thinking of putting like a thousand dollars you're saying into an ETF, consider putting in a hundred dollars into it every week over the next couple of months or maybe if you want to get in faster 200 over the next couple months but we're in the market condition right now where the market is getting really overextended and it's more likely to pull back than it is to continue this overrun bull run um 
and the, the general market sentiment is getting extremely greedy. And you know the Warren Buffett quote, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. People are getting very greedy. And so you need to be a little bit fearful. So don't put all the money in so fast. Maybe put in $100 over the next 10 weeks, put $100 every week or put $200 every month over the next five months. Something like that, that will spread it out over time. So it doesn't matter if it's up or down on this day, it'll average your price in. And then if you have a job, if you're earning minimum wage, what have you, put like 10% of your income into it every month or every, every other week when you get your paycheck, just 10%, it's almost nothing, but it adds up over time, it really does. There's not much of a difference, doctor, honestly. Um, both of them are ad adjusted portfolios. ETFs aren't as, uh, they, I mean, it's tricky because if it's an ETF on say the S&P 500 index, that doesn't change very often, but some ETFs do change Their portfolio, it depends the ETF because some ETFs do change their portfolios over time. Some funds change their portfolios over time. Um, some only change them once a year and they readjust every year. Some readjust every week. You have Kathy Wood readjusting every day. It, so yeah, doctor, it depends what ETF, it depends what portfolio to compare because some of them can be very similar. The overall idea that you're talking about is instead of um, just putting your money in the overall market and sitting through dips, sitting through bull runs and all of that, you get more of an average because you're trusting somebody to manage the portfolio for you. It's essentially just like paying somebody to manage a portfolio for you. I don't know what the fee setup is. That also is something to uh, look into and consider the different fees for the, either the fund or the portfolio that you're looking at investing into. Um, but the idea behind both of them is that th it's not permanent. The portfolio can be adjusted that, as well as a lot of funds can be adjusted. But doctor, you can still get a big dip in a portfolio managed that way. Why, why did this bottom chart get so stretched out? What happened here? By 22, looking like a breakdown level as well. But it's still trading. I'm not going to take a breakdown within this range. I mean, I could, and it could come down to 520, but the market is hesitating at double bounce off of a support level. Looks like it wants to bounce back up, set a higher high, but it's also setting a red candle right now. So I'm not, I don't want to take a trade right now. This doesn't have a clear direction. It is lunch session and we're going sideways. We don't have a clear reversal pattern on the five minute we did here, kind of, although the deceleration increased in volume on the secondary candle coming up to the test of 524 resistance. And then it did break down. Honestly, I could have taken a trade here on the five minute candle um, down to 522 support, stop 524. But it's happening, this happened so fast. This was too tight of a stop, too tight of a target. I've learned my lesson in this stock today. Um, that's what got me, I, I'm now down one R because I didn't get out. I wasn't able to get out at my target or at my break even because of the massive spreads. This spread is over 40 cents, 42 cents spread right now. 
50 cent spread right now. So if the target is only $1 with a 50 cent spread, I might not, I might only get filled at a 50 cent target, which is not worth the risk. Because when you're getting out of a trade, you get out on the, on the bid. If you're selling, it's on the bid. If you're buying, it's on the ask. And so you, you always get the worst end of the deal on the spreads. Welcome, Nathan. I've done three trades, one losing trade, one winning trade, and then one winning trade that didn't get filled. Like I was just talking about uh, from the massive spreads, 50 cent spreads didn't get filled, ended up stopping out. So overall, one one loss because the, the first losing trade and the first winning trade negated each other. So now we're just down one loss on the day. Not much. I mean, I'm not trading an insane share size. We're down uh, $800 on a $100,000 account. John, I see you in chat, by the way. Good morning to you. Welcome to the stream. If you need any clarification on the uh, on the challenge, I see you put in the command. If you need any clarification, please feel free to ask questions. Comrade, if you have any more questions, you've been asking some great ones. Feel free to keep asking. This is an educational stream. The point is for you to be educated, so. Feel free to keep asking questions. NVIDIA. We just had to get NVIDIA today. Stock trading has um, grown quite a bit on Twitch. The larger streams have almost twice as many viewers as uh, they used to. It's good to see. Some people trading uh, on here who clearly don't know what they're doing, but Props to them for trying nonetheless. GME hype. I don't think it was. Yeah, you know what? My viewer count went up on the GME hype. Yeah, I don't think right now like the GME hype went up and then came down. Like it's it's done. So maybe some people stayed in those streams. Maybe not. My view count didn't stay up. It did go up during all of that, but it didn't stay up. We're around the average right now of like fifteen. Um, 
Are you thinking you'll be able to make a couple more today or not really? Yeah, Nathan, I mean, I'm watching. I'm waiting for setups, but I'm going to get, I'm going to take setups that the market gives me. I'm not going to force anything. Just because I'm stuck with one stock doesn't mean I have to trade every single move that happens in the stock. That's a very, that's, that's one thing that I want you all to be very, very, very careful of when you're trading is that when you feel like you are limited by the stocks that you trade, for example, the pattern day trader rule, that you're limited to three day trades every five rolling trading days, don't feel like you have to take every single move that happens in a stock. You still need to be smart. Like right now, this is breaking down under 522, stop 524, target 520, and then 518. Looks pretty decent, and it could be a one-hour trade, but with the current spread, not worth it in my opinion as well as this is trading. But excuse me, this is trading in a range right now, and I don't want to take a breakout trade in a range um with a high spread and with this choppiness because it doesn't have a clear direction you think nakd is undervalued let me check it out i'm keeping nvidia up on this screen just in case anything happens i want to be able to catch it but i will check it out on another screen here uh, do i think it is undervalued I think it is finding an equilibrium point at $1 per share it was at 50 cents. It was lower than that, but rough average of 50 cents. And I think it makes spikes regularly and then pulls back after those spikes. So I don't think it's undervalued. I think it is trying to find its value and I think it is close right now. It just depends on news that comes out. It moved on, um, all the Reddit moves on GameStop and whatnot. That's how it spiked previously. So just like it, it spiked at the end of January just because GameStop spiked. That wasn't because there's any news in this stock coming out. So I'd like to see it come back to the levels before GameStop happened, come back to its pre-meme stock days, and then assess how the company is, assess the company financials, all of that. But I don't think it's necessarily undervalued right now. SGLB, yeah, S S G. LB. Let's check it out. Big move today up 121%. Volume is looking really good on the long time frame. $8 is a pretty strong resistance level. So is $10 and so is six. So six is the current support level that we're watching. Switch to the five minute chart. You can see it tested eight and got rejected. You can see it actually tested six as a support level today. So I think the move already happened in this one. I think it already broke out. I would have taken this pre-market over pre-market highs at 540. Um, that's a, a high, not the pre-market high, but a resistance level in pre-market taking it then. That was right at the open um, when it broke pre-market highs. For that breakout, for an OBO opportunity there, exclamation point OBO in chat, if you don't know uh, that pattern. And then it went straight up and then it broke out 750 resistance, the, the previous high, tried but got rejected by eight whole dollar and now is coming back down. So we'll see how it tests these support levels and what it does here around 750. Might get a boost from the stimulus in summer, comrade? Possibly, although the stimulus is going to inspire more ideas of inflation and increased interest rates because there's more cash in the economy now. And when there's more cash, they can charge interest and banks can make their money back when they lost money by loaning it out and people couldn't pay it back. Um, they had to lower their interest rates because interest rates have been very low to boost the stock market for the past four years. The Fed was uh, pushed, let's say, towards lowering interest rates because that boosts the stock market, but it doesn't boost the economy. So the economy is essentially very, very, very sick, but has been on painkillers for four years. And so the painkillers has kept it alive. It has kept it feeling very active. It's been on painkillers and steroids, let's say. So it has like a bit of an energy boost. So the stock market has been pushed up and inflated, but the economy is hurting underneath. And so the stimulus isn't going to save the economy. If anything, the stimulus is gonna say, okay, it's, it's time to get off of all the steroids and painkillers and actually fight this virus, not coronavirus, but like the, the whole sick metaphor, and, and, and uh, like fight this sickness and get actually healthy instead of just putting a bunch of band-aids over and to uh, get off of all those painkillers and 
and uh, steroids, you, you have to go through a little bit of pain first before you have to have a fever, all of those symptoms before you can start feeling better, right? So translating that metaphor into the stock market, the stock market has been doing really well, but the economy is sick. And so we need to experience a little bit of a fever, a little bit of pain, a little bit of suffering before the economy can be fully brought back and have a healthy economy again. And the way to do that is increasing interest rates, getting money flowing back into the government instead of all the money flowing out of the government, because then the government has more freedom to do stuff with funds in the future. Right now, the government has just been increasing their debt, which has a lot of pressure and makes lawmaking very difficult for them because they're very limited in their budget. If their budget is all going towards things uh, such as stimulus checks and they're not able to use their uh, budget to actually make life better in our country. So... I don't think we'll get a boost from this stimulus in summer. I think we will get a boost if the economy gets healthy. By the way, that SGLB is coming up. It bounced off of 750 support and is testing eight again. It's very choppy on the five minute. Green candle, red candle, green candle could break out, but there's not a clear breakout pattern. So you could chase it, but it is just that at this point, it is chasing it. Nvidia did come down to 520. Is we did make that 1R range play. But again, I'm not too interested in a range trade. The 15 minute chart actually looks kind of interesting on here. Spy is coming back down. It's mostly what I'm watching. NVIDIA is now following Spy finally. It wasn't following it at the open. You can see this trended up. Spy trended down. But it is now as of 740 local time. Which is what? 10, 4, no. 740 local time. It, it's yeah 740 would be 1040 yeah yeah 1040 eastern time 1040 market time um following the spy to a t so now that the spy has this support level we're watching uh, yeah exactly comrade so everything's going to go down with the market when the market has uh, this much conviction high volume it's bringing things down things are going to start following the market right now however it still has this support level intraday double bounce and daily support level at 393.30 in SPY. Um, GameStop plummeting down right now, halted down to 226. Happy for those of you who got out in profit. We had a few talks with some of you here in chat um, privately about helping you manage your GameStop trades to uh, get out with minimal pain and suffering <clears throat> and that's that 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 game stop move actually might be what's turning things down right now because a lot of hedge funds actually started chasing this trade too I mean, there's a lot of, again, I'm overall bearish sentiment in the market. I mentioned that at the start, but everything is being brought down by it. GameStop pulling the market down. Classic, classic GameStop. I made $300 on a GMA trade, only took 10 minutes. Yeah, very scary, comrade. Exactly. I mean, if you're not trading that much and you get $300, holy cow, that feels good. But it's also very, very, very destructive to your trading if you're just a beginner because it it starts building bad habits right and trading is all about building good habits being disciplined and making consistent profits over a long period of time so if you get really lucky and make a lot of profits in a short period of time then it, it kills your discipline it's like if you if i told you that i could snap my fingers and give you all the muscles that you want and make you as big as you want as muscular and bulky as you want right now just snap snap my fingers and you said yeah 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 yeah, do it and i did it and you're all of a sudden really big people start treating you differently but you don't feel like you earned it you don't feel like you, you are worth that muscle yet because you you didn't spend the time working out things in life as well as in finances are not about the destination trading is not about how much money you make at the end of the day it's not how much profit you make it's about the process it's about that trading is an amazing sport that teaches you discipline it teaches you to look inward at yourself it teaches you active meditation teaches you active listening 
to the market, asking questions, listening to what the market's doing, and then asking questions and, and debating situations, various situations and, and probabilities and conditions that the market can be in. It teaches you again to, to be introspective and reflect on yourself. It teaches you what faults you have in your own emotional discipline and in your own fears and stuff that has come from your childhood. And trading can pull that out and help you resolve these fears, help you resolve these emotions. So trading is an extremely powerful thing, but trading is about the process. It's about enjoying the process. It's about being disciplined and building a strong process. Um, and that discipline will carry on through the rest of your life. However, if you just instantly got the muscles, you didn't have the discipline, you don't have a work ethic. Now you're taught that you can just snap your fingers and have anything you want in life and you'll never work hard for anything. Same thing in trading. If you just instantly, it's like winning the lottery. If you just instantly get a bunch of profits on a trade like GameStop, you don't feel like you earn that money. You'll now expect to just instantly get money in, in life and not have to work for it. And that's not a healthy mindset to have. GameStop plummeted down. You can see people are trying to buy every single dip in this as possible. Um, but SPY is saying otherwise testing the support level. probably lose the muscle because exactly there you go Nathan then you'll lose the muscle because you eat bad and you don't work out same thing in the stock market you'll lose the money because you start trading poorly you don't have the discipline you don't have the emotional mental control you don't have the trading system the structure the strategy that got you that money because it didn't get you the money it wasn't structure it wasn't strategy that got you that money spies breaking down here on high volume love to see it Yeah, comrade, it's a really smart idea to have a stop loss for that reason. So that's good. You're, you, you know what? You say you're a beginner, but you you do know. You said you're a beginner, but you're learning and you know quite a bit. You do know quite a bit. I'd agree with that. You know quite a bit. You just need practice. You need the discipline. You need some, some uh, a specific structure or strategy to trade so that you can find some consistency. Market is fully breaking down now. This is great to see. Um, you have the chart over my head of SPY breaking that support level. So I'm going to head back over to NVIDIA and see what this is doing. It is still testing this 518 level. <clears throat> but not much of a level. It is a previous wick on the 15 minute chart. The bodies in this wick, the previous support level was 520. But I didn't like the breakdown of 520. It wasn't too clean on the five minute. Just nothing very clean in this stock. There's no setups. It might make moves, but you can't take a trade on a move without a setup because then you don't have edge. An edge in the market is what keeps you alive in the long run. That's what makes you profits in the long run. It's what makes sure that your wins are big and your losses are small and that you're able to make profits consistently over time. If you don't have edge because you don't have a setup, then you're not going to profit in the long run. You're not going to be able to succeed in the long run. And so you don't want to just take trades on moves because it's moving. You need to take trades on setups because it set up a opportunity for you to get in on the move with managed risk, managed mental risk, managed capital risk, limited risk, as well as a controlled and analyzed reward profile, either getting out at a hard profit target, getting out a partial at your profit target and then holding the rest or trading it with a trailing stop, all sorts of different exit strategies that you can do in the market. But that's why you need to trade with some sort of system on some sort of setup. You can't just chase moves. If you chase moves left and right, it's like, it, it, it's like if I gave you the ability to fly and told you to fly with a flock of birds and the birds are all like super harmonious and flying together, going left and right, swooping up and down and moving all around. And you're just this human with the ability to fly. Like, I don't know what you're doing, but you're trying to chase the moves and eventually the, the flock of birds gets away from you. Thank you for the follow comrade and welcome to the community. I hope you learned so much from this community so much from the stream the people in this community are so amazing and so supportive if you open up to them and you give the community the people here in chat 
the people in the Discord a chance to warm up to you and to they they will be your supporters for life. They will root you on through every single trade that you're in. We have an amazing, amazing, amazing community here. If holding stocks and options is 98% of what you're going to do, do you mean holding like long term, like investing is 98% of what you're going to do? Or do you just mean like your job, your career earning income is going to be stocks? Nathan, if you could only trade one stock for the rest of your life, what do you think you would pick? One stock for the rest of my life? Well, I'd obviously pick a company that's probably that has a higher probability, a high probability of actually being around for the rest of my life. Um, in which case that brings up like Apple, Google, Amazon, Tesla. Um, I wouldn't trust any of these newer stocks, Lemonade, Space. The stocks that I, are in my investment portfolio that I love, but honestly, it might be Tesla if I could only trade one stock. It might be Tesla because... Tesla has the volatility to day trade, has the volatility and the consistency. The sw it, it makes the, the big, it, it makes trends, uptrend, downtrend for swing trading, but it doesn't follow SR, so it's kind of difficult in that sense. I'd probably learn it much better if I could only trade that stock for the rest of my life. Um, maybe SPY, honestly? Because SPY will always exist no matter what individual companies do. That feels like a cop-out answer. Do I have to say an individual stock or can I say a, a, an ETF? SPY is breaking down under that level, by the way. GameStop is turning around. It looks like it wants to continue back down. All right, Nathan, you're not responding to the question, so I'm just going to say spy. I think spy. If I could, if I had to choose one security, one thing to trade. I just choose SPY. It has a good option volume, good option pricing, good volatility in it. And it will be around for the rest of my life. As a fund that follows the S&P 500, even as stocks and companies come and go, even as stocks enter different uh, eras in their company and they trade differently, that doesn't matter because SPY will trade the same. So if that's not too much of a cop-out answer, I'd say SPY. Oh, excuse me. What about you all? What, what stock would you, if you could trade only one stock for the rest of your life? Quite the cop-out. Okay, if it's too much of a cop-out, I choose something um, steady, consistent, sticks to SR, Apple. Probably choose Apple. Yeah, okay, okay, Nathan, you're right. That's what I was asking. I would probably choose Apple then if I had to pick a, an individual stock. Why is that surprising? It's one of the biggest companies, has the money to stay around for a while, and it's also constantly innovating. No, Tesla, I don't like day trading. Swing trading is not terrible, but it just doesn't, it, it stops out a lot. It doesn't follow SR too much. It's uh, extremely volatile on long-term swings, and it has too much, um, there's too many people with opinions on it and, and not enough people trading the facts. I don't love trading Tesla personally. I could see Tesla at 3K, absolutely. 
I agree. Comrade, I'm in Tesla at $35 per share. I'd love to see it at 3K. And I think it will get there. But if I had to choose one stock for the rest of my life to trade, it probably wouldn't be Tesla. For trading, for investing, I don't know. Tesla might be a really good option to invest in actually, long term. Especially once we get onto Mars, maybe Tesla will build some of the future Mars rovers. But whatever Tesla does, Apple's just gonna copy. <laughs> I mean, you say trade. I'd rather trade Apple than Tesla. But invest? I'd probably rather invest in Tesla than Apple. Like if, if I could only be in one stock, not trading, not of it, like I could only be in one stock, I would probably choose like Tesla and I would invest it and not touch it and I quit trading. <laughs> I continue teaching other people, but I would quit trading. Because like I've shown you, if you can only trade one stock, it it's so finicky and you want to find the perfect, the best opportunity of every day not force opportunities in an individual stock. And so I'd rather just put money in, let it quadruple, 10x, whatever, and teach people how to trade, and then continue putting that money into Tesla. That's probably my, my, uh, my answer, my final answer. That answer got half of the viewers to leave. Interesting, not many Tesla fans in here. <laughs> Breaking down 518 and Nvidia. But it, I mean, this is eight red candles in a row. We have this previous wick came down to 517.50. It's just not pretty. There's like, there's, this is not an opportunity. This is not tradable. This is a move. This is not a setup. I can't force it as much as I'd love to throw another trade in there, get all my wins, get all my losses back and, and then end the first day of the challenge green. I can't force anything. I have a feeling how this week needs to go is I need to have a, a couple slow days and then some big massive days. Like a couple slow days of either, like this stock is just not day trading today well. Like Nvidia today is just not day trading very well today. At least for my strategies, my setups, my uh, trading style, my rules. And then having like one or two or three days really work out well. Where I take get to take like one or two big winning trades. I think that might be the best option. What do you guys think, by the way, of the camera size? Of my webcam size? Can you like, does it feel like we're here talking together? Does it feel like I'm just on the sideline? Like what if my camera was like this big? That'd probably be too big in the way, take up too information on the screen, too much information on the screen, right? What if my camera was this big? How does this look full screen? That's a pretty big camera. I think my camera size is pretty good how it is. Like my, my normal camera size, let me change it back. I think this camera size is okay. My opinion. Because full screen, I mean, it looks pretty darn good. I think it's a good size. I think everything looks pretty good. Everything except for the watch list being cut off a tiny bit.
minimize that. We're back. I think it's good IMO for a stock stream with data everywhere. Good, maybe thinner. Thinner. You want me to be thinner? Dude, I can't just lose weight on the spot like that. Got too big of muscles. I can't, I can't just get rid of it. I thought so. I think so too, doctor. Strange. I'm, I'm happy with my weight, to be honest. How about, how about this? Is that small enough for you? All right, Nvidia bouncing off of this 518 level. Some market bounces, five minute reversal, increasing volume though, I don't love it. I don't love any of it. Hmm. Need this to pick a direction. I'm done trading in 18 minutes. Doesn't pick a direction in 18 minutes then. I'm done, I'm trading. The morning session and an hour into the lunch session. If I was like, if if I was to like properly do this challenge, I would trade all the way up until the uh, the day closes. But I have other things to do. I need to create zero to one trading course content. I need to. Uh, I have a few coaching calls today. I have a few mentorship clients to uh, to teach and and have lessons with. So. <clears throat> You guys know I'm more passionate about my education stuff than the actual trading. I guess it's not a question of passion. I'm equally passionate, but the education comes first before the trading challenges. I think you guys got quite a few great lessons out of this challenge so far. Like right now, I ask myself, like, do I want to buy here over 520 or go short here at 520? Like, what's it going to do? <laughs> I honestly don't know. And if you don't have an answer for that to go, like, if you don't know if you should be long or short in the stock, the answer is neither. You should know whether you should be going long or short with conviction. With <clears throat> strength in your idea. I mean, I like the deceleration. I like the finally a green candle, but this could just be a dead cat bounce. Could just come back down afterwards. Market's very red on the day. Well, I mean, I say very red on the day. I don't mean like the whole day, but it came down under this major support level. Down 0.3%. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a dead cat bounce in the market and then Nvidia kind of following. Okay, so every time I go to take a trade, it's gonna try and change my scaling. Weird. Pog champ. Can't use pause champ anymore. More appropriate emote. Wait, no, which one was banned? I don't know, I forget. All right, let's see what this is doing. <laughs> 15 minutes left. One more 15 minute candle, let's see how it goes. I mean, it's just ranging sideways. Honestly, there's not a single five minute pattern, 15 minute pattern that can form in the next 15 minutes. So I'm just gonna call it there, not waste anybody else's time. It's not gonna set up, it's not gonna happen. Let's be honest here, it's not gonna happen. So today we are ending the day down 
$810 on a $100,000 account. That's not much. It's less than 1%. Down less than 1% on the day. I'm completely happy with that first day of trading just one stock and it was a not it was one of the good stocks but it wasn't like it, it wasn't a good day for this stock the only good trade would have been to go long over 514 but at that point the stock wasn't even up that much i mean i could have traded it but the market was coming down this stock could have come down like i could not have predicted that this would trade against the market for the first downtrend and then follow the market for the rest of the day like that's it's tough luck. You just, in situations like this, need to just sit back and try to uh, conserve your capital and minimize your losses as much as possible. And so that's what we did. That is what we did. We minimized our losses and now we are here down less than 1% on the day. Not like the huge, oh my gosh, we're up 50% on the first day of the trading challenge. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to teach you how to analyze and trade one individual stock, not so that you can form a strategy off of only trading one stock every day. That's not the way to trade, but so that when you are trading a single stock, you can look at it with an, a, a new pair of eyes, a, a, a fresh understanding of how to analyze a single stock. So I hope you all learned something from it. Feel free to let me know in the Discord server what you learned from today. It's a good way to... Uh, drive that whatever you did learn into your brain by sharing it with the server sharing it with the group thank you comrade you as well snow powder you too orange g's it's been a it was a good day it was an interesting up and down interesting day all right thank you so much for watching thank you for enjoying for learning something for hanging out and I will see you tomorrow morning when the market opens. We are spinning that wheel. NVIDIA is now off of the list. And we are going to trade whatever stock comes up on the wheel tomorrow. So have a good day, everyone. And I will see you tomorrow morning.